All right, I am starting a new segment that I would like to introduce to you guys, and it is Ruin a Princess Movie. So, I know we all grew up watching Disney princess movies and whatnot, and we all loved them. But as an adult, watching them with my three-year-old daughter, I've come to find that there are a lot of flaws and problems within these movies. And obviously, like, there's always flaws in every movie, there's always kind of some plot points that don't really work and things like that. But princess movies tend to have some severe plot holes. And so I'm going to be starting a series where I get to ruin them because they deserve it. Because of lazy writers and whatnot. But today I'm going to start off with Sleeping Beauty. It's not that Sleeping Beauty is by far, by any means, my least favorite princess. Because that would be Ariel. She is the worst. Like, ugh, the little mermaid. What a horrible movie. She's the worst. But, um, that's for another video. Today I'm going to focus on Sleeping Beauty because it's something that I've watched recently and have read several times to my daughter. And there are just some things that I'm just baffled by. So let's get started. So, let's start off with the beginning. So, the movie starts off where... Aurora is born, and so the king and queen want to celebrate her birth, and everyone comes to get her gifts and things like that. And in this party, there are three fairies that are giving her gifts. And one gives her the gift of beauty, one gives her the gift of song, and before the third one gets to give her gift, uh, Maleficent shows up, and she's pissed because she didn't get invited. And so as consequence, she's going to murder the child. That sounds, that sounds reasonable. If someone didn't invite me to a party, like a baby shower or something like that, I'd be like, yeah, when your baby's 16, I'm gonna kill them. No, so that's, that's, that's the first horrible plot point. But, it's better because she says, oh, on her 16th birthday, she'll touch a spinning wheel and she'll die. But then the third fairy interjects and like, no, she won't die. She'll just fall into a deep sleep and will never wake up until her true love's kiss comes. And I'm thinking, sorry, his hand. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm thinking, what? Why would you counter her curse by saying? No, she's just gonna sleep for forever unless True Love's kiss comes and kisses her and then she'll wake up. Why didn't you be like, um, no, she's just not gonna die. Or, oh, she won't die unless someone, I don't know, touches her, says her name, anything, anything. I, that just seems, I don't know. Obviously it was pretty last second, like she didn't have a whole lot of time to think about it. So I'll, give, I'll let her slide a little bit on this one, but obviously there are many, many more plot points where the fairies are just the worst. It's morons. Um, so after the spell is cast and everyone knows that Aurora was going to die on, or sorry, not die, fall asleep on her 16th birthday, um, the king orders for all of the spinning wheels to be destroyed. And it's kind of unfortunate because it's going to be 16 years and spinning wheels are out full of time and it's closed, right? Anyways. Um, but, uh, but I get it. He wants to protect his child. Get rid of them. Sure. And then they're like, you know what? Here's a great idea. We take this baby and give them to three fairies who have never mothered and who are the worst. And we're gonna let them raise her in a forest, in a little cottage, all by themselves. They're not gonna have interactions with anyone else. And they're gonna lie to her and pretend that her name is Briar Rose. And then they're gonna raise her up and then on, on her 16th birthday, they'll bring her back. And everyone's like, that's a genius idea. Let's give them this baby, raise her. 
by three fairies that are not going to be able to use their magic or any of the powers. So, that way, Blissant is never going to be able to find them. She'll be so lost and confused that Aurora will be perfectly safe. Obviously, that's not how it happens, right? So, for 16 years, Aurora believes that her name is Briar Rose and that she just ends up having three moms. I don't know how they kind of explain that. I don't know if they ever give her the sex ed talk because there's three of us. Anyways, don't think too much about it. So they give her the name Briar Rose and don't really tell her what is going on until her 16th birthday after they kind of ruin things by using the magic. But I'll get to that in just a second. But they believe that by her not knowing who she is and by her telling people that her name is Briar Rose, if she by chance meets someone, which she only does like once and it has to be Prince Philip, who, she, who she's betrothed to, but she doesn't know that and she falls in love with him and he falls in love with her and he doesn't know that she's actually Aurora and I mean the chances of the meeting in the forest are like astronomically low like that's impossible but not only that but they also fall in love because obviously his singing is solid obviously she's singing first he loves that and then she hears him sing I know you I walked with you once upon a dream. And obviously the lights went through over. She's like, I'm yours. Take me. And so, obviously that doesn't work out. Like, Aurora comes back, tells the fairy, guys, guess what? I just met, met the most amazing man. The first one I've ever met. And he's great at singing, so I'm in love. Like, okay, I hate to burst your bubble, but you're actually a princess, uh, you've been cursed, and you're betrothed to Prince Philip, so. Happy birthday! No, but the fairies want to give her a great birthday, and so they, you know, want to make a cake, want to make a dress, but they suck at it because they're the worst homemakers ever and haven't learned anything over 16 years, and they fail epically, so they use their magic. Like, okay, just as just this once we'll use our magic. Just on the most important day of the whole time we're um, watching her because we're gonna watch her for 16 years to protect her and we're not gonna use our magic until the day when she can actually have the curse fall upon her. Morons. Have you ever heard of Aristotle? Plato? Socrates? Anyways, and so they use their magic and Maleficent's crow sees it and reports it to Maleficent. However, the fairies don't know that. And yet, after all this, after the part, they're like, okay, let's take you back to the castle. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You just spent 16 years trying to keep her hidden from Maleficent. All for this particular day, this, this day, where she can have the curse happen on her. And you happen to just decide to bring her back to the castle? What was the freaking point of keeping her away for 16 years if on the day of, you're just gonna bring her back? Holy crap, man. Worst plan ever. Anyways, so naturally, the plan sucks and to bring her back. Like, okay, go to your room all by yourself. Good luck. And I don't know why no one, they didn't post guards. I don't know why they didn't pe people in her room. I don't know why her parents aren't with her because they haven't seen her in 16 years. But they decided to do that and uh, leave her by herself. Because it's not like Maleficent can just magically show up. Oh wait, she, she did that at the party. Oh. Interesting. So she magically shows up and she puts kind of uh, Aurora in a trance and she goes and finds a spinning wheel and pricks her finger on it and she 
doesn't do deep sleep. So, the fairy's reaction to this is just the worst. Because they're like, oh, oh, she fell asleep. Let's put everyone else to sleep too. That way they won't be sad by the fact that she's asleep. Guys, no one has seen her in 16 years. You think the fact that she's taking a little cat nap is going to make them so sad that I don't even know. Like, why not use all those people and to find her true love and bring him to her to kiss her? And I said, like, no, we got this. We're gonna put them all asleep. We'll make sure it happens. Because apparently they're 100% confident that her true love's not in the kingdom asleep. But fortunately for them, the prince fell up. And Maleficent realizes that, so she captures him. And I don't know what Maleficent is exactly thinking. Honestly, she could just kill him and have it be done with, and Aurora would always would sleep for forever, and the fairies would just feel horrible, as they should. But instead, she's like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep him captured. But then the fairies come and they give him a magic shield and a magic sword. Now you can save Aurora. And some people were like, ah, they say, the fairies said that they can't, that, he, that Maleficent's too strong. She's too powerful for them to break her spell or whatever. But they're able to instantly make a magic shield and sword that can kill Maleficent. Maleficent super easily. All I pull up does is throw the sword at her and she dies. She turns into a, a dragon, stabs her, she's dead. So I don't know what they're talking about that they can't, they're not powerful enough to stop her. <sighs> Just. Just. Anyways, Pr Prince Philip fights his way out, he escapes, gets through the thorns. She also reacting super easily by throwing a sword at her. Goes up, gives her a kiss. Boom, everyone wakes up because the parents are like, oh, good. We just saved all those people from a terrible heartache. So amazing. Uh, happy ending. I just, I just, I can't with these fairies. They are just the worst almost as bad as I heard. And I would love to hear from all of you what other plot holes there are in this movie. And please put them in the comments below. Additionally, if there are any other movies you would like me to put holes in, please put that in the comments down below as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe to this video and for more content like this. Have a great day.